infrared images tend to lack contrast. I'll show you 10 ways to add contrast to your infrared images in Lightroom. I have a special new project that I'll be releasing this spring that I'm very excited about. If you want to be the first to learn about it, sign up for my newsletter. The link is in the description. Why do infrared images lack contrast? Well, first, they're typically shot in RAW. This allows you to decide how much contrast to add when developing the image. Additionally, the limited range of wavelengths being captured can reduce the contrast of your image. Let's fix that. We'll start with the basic methods and work up to the more advanced methods. At the end, I'll combine all of these techniques to edit an image. Let's start with this image. The first thing that I'll want to do is set a white balance. In order to do that, I'll need a profile that'll allow me to get a good white balance. So I'm going to go to my profile picker and I'm going to select infrared temp negative 100. This is part of the infrared profile pack. So there are hundreds of profiles in the infrared profile pack that will help you set a good white balance for your camera. It's available for free to download. The link is in the description. So now that I've got this profile selected, I can select the white balance picker and I can come over here into the image and I'll select part of the granite here, click on that, and that will set a good white balance for this image. So now I'm all set with my white balance. We can move on to the first way to increase contrast in an image and that is with the contrast slider. So in the basic panel, I have the contrast option under tone and if I drag that to the right, that will increase the contrast in my image. So there's many methods we're going to talk about, and in fact, many of them I will stack on top of each other. So let's just cover each of them individually, and then we'll look at them all together at the end. So I'll reset contrast, and now number two is clarity down in the present section. I can drag the clarity slider to the right. This will increase the contrast of the midtones only. So that has a very nice effect. So let's reset that. Number three is dehaze. So if I drag the dehaze slider, that will dramatically increase the contrast of the image. This can be a bit heavy handed when used globally in the basic panel. So I tend not to do that and I'll show you better ways to do that later. That is the dehaze option. Number four is in the tone curve. So we'll open up tone curve and we'll select the first option, which is the parametric curve. In the parametric curve, I can drag highlights to the right lights a little bit to the right, darks to the left, and shadows to the left, and that will increase the contrast of an image. You can adjust these suit to taste to get the contrast where you'd like it for your image. Let me hit right click and reset. Number five is also in the tone curve. This is the point curve. So that's the second option, this white circle here. From within the point curve, I can manually add points to the curve wherever I like, and then make adjustments. So for example, if I put three points on the tone curve, I can drag the, this lower point down, I can drag this upper point up, I can then make whatever adjustments I like manually, I can add additional points if I like. Let's say I wanna put another point down here, I can add as many points as I like to get this exactly where I need to be. Using the point curve, you can manually create an S-curve or any type of additions that you need to make to increase the contrast of your image. I will reset this and next up still in the tone curve number six is the drag on a point in the image. So if I select this selector here and then go into the image when I click in the image a dot will be placed in the tone curve and then I can drag up or down to change the contrast of the image. So I'll drag up slightly and then I will go to this dark area of the granite click and drag down that will create a second point in the image. So this would allow you to specifically adjust tones in your image. So I could go down to this tree trunk and that'll get me something in the blacks and I could take that and drag that down slightly. So I'm making adjustments based on specific areas using the drag option with this little adjuster here. Make these adjustments in the tone curve. Okay so let me reset the tone curve. Next up number seven is still in the tone curve, down in the point curve, down here where it says linear, there's a drop down and we can select medium contrast, which is a default light amount of contrast that you can add to your image. You can also select strong contrast, which will give you more contrast in your image. These are good starting points. You can accept these as the default or you can then adjust them further, move the dots around, increase the the values of the strength, whatever you like, with the medium and strong contrast. Additionally, you can also, if you've made a number of changes and you like 
the contrast settings you've made in the tone curve and want to save those to use in other images, you can come down to point curve and select save. That will save this as an additional preset that you can use in the future. Okay, so that's it for the tone curve. Let me reset this and we will move on. The next up is back in the basic panel. We're going to talk about profiles. So let's say that I wanted to make this a black and white image. One of the things that I could do would be to come into the profile browser and in the profile browser, there's a whole bunch of these groups available. I can come down to the black and white group. Then I can roll my mouse over each of these black and white profiles and see what the impact is on the contrast of my image. So just rolling over them will give me a little bit of a preview. I can try them all. And then once I'm satisfied with what I like, I could say, let's say I liked number four, then I could click that. And now that becomes the baseline for my image, which as you can see, there's already been some contrast added to this image just from that profile alone. I'm going to start with another image and we'll make some quick adjustments here. So I will select the infrared temp negative 100. I'll use my picker and select a white balance here somewhere in the middle of the image. That looks pretty good. For this particular image, I'm going to apply a color swap profile. So I'll go to my profile browser. I'm going to close down the black and white group. I'll go to the infrared color swap group and I can pick from a number of profiles and see a preview of what the colors will look like already swapped. If you're interested in these, these are available for purchase online and I have other videos that walk you through the process for applying color swaps directly in Lightroom. So I'm going to pick this profile and now this is my good baseline. Uh, let me make a couple adjustments here beforehand. So I want to, I want to crop in on this image a little bit just to focus on the, the, what I think is the most interesting part of the image. You know, I think I'll also switch to a 16 by nine crop for this image and get rid of some of those shadows in the foreground. Okay. So that looks pretty good. So I will accept that. Okay, so this is our starting point for this image. What we wanna look at is to more selectively apply settings using the mask tool. So we'll go and select mask, and then I'm going to select, select sky. And what this will do is use the AI in Adobe Lightroom to automatically select the sky and highlight it. So now that I have the sky selected, I'm going to apply dehaze. But instead of applying it globally, like I was doing from the basic panel, applying it here is more selective. I can use higher values of dehaze in the sky that still look pretty good than I could in the whole image. Using a value up into the 30s here could really look terrible globally in an image, but by just limiting this effect to the sky, I can actually apply greater values in a more targeted way. The next thing I want to do is add contrast, but to not the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'll say create new mask. I'm going to do select sky again, but this time it's going to be a little bit different because I'm not actually trying to select the sky. I'm trying to select everything else. And in order to do that, I'm going to click the invert option. So now I'm selecting everything but the sky. This works pretty well in some landscape images. It's not going to work in every image. It's a technique that I like to try if I'm able to. So now that I've selected just the ground, now I can focus on the things that I want to adjust in the ground. So I can increase the contrast. I can come down and maybe add a little bit of texture, a little bit of clarity and just a smidge of dehaze, but not as much as I would apply in the sky, because again, it'll be sort of too crunchy on the ground. So just a little bit here. So by using the select sky mask, I can select just the sky to make changes there, specifically dehaze, or I can invert the sky to select everything else and make other changes using the mask option. So I'm going to go to mask and do select subject. This particular image has a very distinctive subject, so that should allow the AI to be able to select this. Sometimes I like to try the select subject in landscape photos, but it's a bit hit and miss. So you can see it does a pretty good job here, although I could go in and you know add, and so add to this to add additional parts and maybe subtract some of the shadows. But for now, I'll just take this as is. I can add contrast to this subject. I could add a little texture and a little clarity to really make the subject pop a bit and a little bit of dehaze. I could also do the same thing that I did in the previous version. I could do select a subject again, which will give me another cutout mask of the subject. But instead of applying it to the subject, I can do the same thing I did with the sky, which is I can use invert to apply this to everything else. And then if I wanted to make other changes to the image, so adjust the contrast or make other changes to everything but the subject, I can do that here as well.
So the first thing we will do is select a profile and I'll set a white balance. I'll white balance on the face of this cliff. Okay, that's a pretty good white balance. I'm gonna swap colors. So let's pick a color swap and this one looks pretty good. Okay, so now here's sort of our baseline and we're ready to go in adding some contrast. So what are we gonna do now? The first thing we're gonna do is the look at the HSL panel. HSL to add contrast? Yep, we can certainly add contrast in HSL. So I'm gonna to go to the luminance tab, the L in HSL, and I'm gonna select this picker and I'm going to look at the color of this brush that's in the foreground and I can adjust the luminance of this up or down which will impact its uh, contrast within the image. So you can set this to, to be very bright or very dark, whatever you like, you can make that adjustment there. Uh, the next one is in color grading. So let's go down to the color grading panel. So in color grading, there's a couple things that I wanna do here. So first of all, I'm going to come down to the shadows and I wanna pick a shadow that is similar in color to this brush. So I will go to this picker, this, this little palette here, and I will hold my mouse down on this eyedropper and I'm gonna select this color here so I can get that color. Um, and typically I don't, I want this to be, the saturation to be relatively low for this. So something around 20 to 30 is fine. So we can, I can hold down my shift key and I can adjust the saturation. But again, I'm not trying to overly uh, do a color grade on this. I'm just doing a light color grade on this. And then I'm gonna apply the same technique to the highlights. Uh, so in the highlights, I'm gonna grab my swatch here and I will click on this picker and I'll pick the sky. So that gives me the sky color and then I can adjust the saturation to get what I like. So right now you're thinking, well, this that didn't really add any contrast to the image. If I disable color grading, you can see, no, it didn't have a dramatic change. It's a little bit of a color grade, but not much actual contrast added. What I wanna do now is go back to shadows and go down to the luminance slider. If I go to this area that th shows all three of them, then it's this, it's this unlabeled slider below. But I will go directly to shadows and I'm gonna take luminance and I'm gonna drag this way down. So I'll, I'll probably do it a little bit more dramatically than I would otherwise for effect. And then I'm gonna go to the highlights and I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna take the luminance and increase the luminance of this color grade. And the amount you can do is gonna vary pretty widely depending on your specific image. Now, when I disable this panel, you can see that it's made a much more noticeable impact on the contrast of the image. Okay, now let's apply all of these techniques into a single image. We have already applied a profile to it. We've done a white balance. We've done a color swap profile. And so now this is our baseline and we're ready to go. Before I get started, I'm gonna go into snapshots and I'm gonna grab a before snapshot. So this is what we look like before we apply any contrast at all. So the first thing that I want to do is go into tone curve and we'll do a strong contrast that gives us a little bit of a starting point. And then the next thing we'll do is go to the sky. So we'll go into mask and select sky. This will allow it to select the sky so that we can apply some dehaze. So the sky is selected. I will apply some dehaze. Add that there. All right, that's pretty good. And then I wanna make a copy for the ground. So let's duplicate this. So we'll duplicate mask one, but we don't want it to be of the sky. We want it to be inverted. So I'm gonna invert this. So now it is a, it is for the ground. We'll close out the dehaze and we'll start our settings fresh here on the ground. So we've got uh, contrast. We'll add a little bit of contrast. We'll do a smidge of texture and a little bit of clarity and just a little bit of dehaze, not maybe as much as we had done in the sky, uh, but a little bit there. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so we've got our sky done and then we've got everything that is not the sky done. So the next thing that I wanna do is ad address that mountain range in the background because I think it needs to be a little sharper. There's some really interesting detail there that we're not picking out. So what I'll do is I'll create a new mask. This time it's a brush. And so I'm going to take my brush and I'll click it in here. And then I'm going to quickly go through and draw uh, within this mountain range. And I'm gonna be a little sloppy and I'll show you why afterwards, uh, because this is uh, the method I like. You know, you can turn on auto mask to kind of get a sharp edge, but then what it does is it has a tendency to um, not catch things uh, within, um, you know, the, um, the, the mountain itself. There, it tends to, 
oh, be a little clippy within within the mountain and, and not get all the detail that you want. So I prefer to go through and select my whole subject with auto mask off. Then what I can do is then I can go in afterwards, I'll go to 100% and let's zoom in to the left side of the image. We'll start on the left side. And now that I've got my selection made, now I can go to erase and auto mask. And now I want to turn the auto mask on because I find that it's easier to erase near an edge than it is to draw near an edge because of the sky. The sky is much cleaner, so it can find that edge much easier. So now if I draw along the edge, I get a super clean line here with my sky. So let me just follow this along across the image and I can just quickly find the edge here. So I'm only impacting the mountains and not the sky. And I will continue deleting with the auto mask. There we go. I love that. Look at that. I get a nice clean edge. You can always go in and touch it up more if you like, but I really like the way that that works. And if I want, I can kind of go along the bottom here as well and touch that up a little bit. But again, with all the detail that you see down at the bottom here, the auto mask is going to have a harder time finding the edge because of all those little details in there. So you might have to turn off auto mask if you really wanted to clean that up. Uh, but for now, I'll just go through here quickly so I can get my mask set. All right, I think that's pretty good. So let's zoom back out. So now that I have that mountain range set, let's make some specific changes to that. So add even a little bit more texture and even a little bit more clarity. I really want that to pop because there's a lot of really nice detail that I, that I want to see. A little bit dehaze there. There we go. So now we're really, we're getting the, a little bit more of the drama in those lines. So I'm all set with my masking now, so I can hit done. And the next thing I want to do is go into HSL. So we'll go into HSL and we can make some adjustments here. So I'll grab, I've got luminance selected. I'll grab the picker. I don't have as much foliage in this image. So we'll see, I can either really make it dark, a more dramatic look, or I could brighten it for a, for a brighter look. Let me actually adjust the saturation. I'll kick the saturation up a little bit. So it kind of stands out a little bit more. There we go. All right, I like that. Now I can go back to luminance and see what making adjustments here does. So I, ooh, I like the dark look. So I'm gonna go a little bit darker on the luminance. Okay, so that helps me to add even more contrast. Then the next thing I'm going to do is go into color grading. So I can go into my color grade and I will pick the shadows and I'll use the swatch and the picker and I'm going to pick a dark spot here, get a dark orange here. And I think I will probably reduce the saturation just a bit. Don't want it to be too much, but then I'm gonna bring that luminance way down. So that's gonna be pretty bold. And then the next thing I'll do is go to the highlights and we'll do the same thing, swatch. Use the picker, grab the sky this time, the blue of the sky, because that's the color I'm looking for. That looks pretty good. And then I will increase the luminance. Helps to add a lot of crispness to this detail back here. Okay, so I've got my color grading done. We'll take a quick look at before and after the color grade. Okay, so I've made all my contrast changes. Now let's take another snapshot. So we'll click this and we'll call this after. So I've got my two snapshots done. I've got before and after. So this is what the image looks like after I've applied all the contrast. Let's remind ourselves what it looked like beforehand. Let's go back before I applied any contrast. Look at the difference. This is very dramatic. There's very little contrast in this image before any work was done. And by simply applying all of these various contrast techniques, I can get to this after image, a dramatic difference. If you find these videos helpful on your infrared photography journey, please consider liking, subscribing, or leaving a comment. Do you have any topics related to infrared photography that you'd like to see addressed? Leave a comment below. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.